Hello, grade 10 students, and welcome to our new lecture, which will deal also with the issue of obesity, but this time it will talk about obesity issues in Lebanon and what the government is doing in order to tackle it, mainly among children and adolescents. Uh, number two, we'll figure out the meanings of unfamiliar terms and words related to the theme by using context clues. And three, answer comprehension and critical thinking questions related to the text. Before that, let's answer the following discussion questions in order to be well introduced into the subject. First of all, number one, how serious do you think the issue of child obesity is in Lebanon? Number two, name two measures that can be taken to tackle this issue. How serious do you think the issue of childhood obesity in Lebanon? Uh, well, Lebanon, like many, many countries around the world in our modern days, is, uh, is suffering from issues related to obesity because the youth is becoming more and more obese to, due to the uh, modern lifestyle uh, we are living in. Um, fast food available, uh, both parents working, no time to cook, um, no time to cook healthy meals, uh, fast food and uh, sugary and fatty foods being so appealing to the young. We talked about those. Name two measures that can be taken. Okay. Question number one. First of all, the answer. As much, how serious do you think the issue of childhood obesity is in Lebanon? As much as one third of Lebanese children and adolescents are obese or overweight. This is a large number, around 33% are either overweight or obese, which makes them very prone to several health issues. Lebanon, like so many countries around the world, is facing serious consequences in its healthcare system and well-being of its people if this issue is not seriously tackled. We know that obesity leads to several uh, chronic diseases, okay? diabetes, uh, heart problems, and even cancer. This will make a huge burden on the government, on the government's healthcare system. Okay, so it has to pay more. Now, in order to tackle this issue, measures need to be taken. So name two measures that you think can be taken to deal with this issue. First, this is a suggested answer. The government could launch an awareness campaign or several awareness campaigns through social media and TV with the help of NGOs, which are non-governmental organizations. Two, there could be also a tax implemented on junk food instead of it being so much cheaper than healthy food. The irony, guys, is that healthy food is so much more expensive than junk food. Uh, this is uh, widely known. It's so much easier to, to get a burger, so much cheaper than to get a, a well-made home-cooked dish. Or if you go to a restaurant, junk food will be much more cheaper than, than eating a healthy meal. Okay, so uh, this is another issue that could be tackled by the government. Why doesn't the government implement more taxes on junk food? and make healthy food more accessible to its people. After all, it's mostly the government that's paying the burden of uh, health, the health care. Okay? When more people are sick, the government has to pay more in order to treat its people okay? through the uh, National Social Security Fund, uh, etc. Okay, now let's start with our reading lesson. Uh, which is entitled, Government Moves to Tackle Childhood Obesity. Paragraph 1, Beirut. Recent estimates show as much as one-third of Lebanese children and adolescents may be overweight or obese. In a bid to tackle a growing problem, caretaker Health Minister Ghassan Hasbani launched or started Sunday, the first national day for combating childhood obesity at an event held at the ministry's headquarters. In his speech, Hasbani said the aim of designating 
a day to fighting childhood obesity is to raise awareness in Lebanon of the disease. Paragraph 2. Posters displayed throughout the ministry listed 10 steps children can take to lead healthier and happier lives, promoting the importance of healthy eating, exercise, and warm family relationships. Paragraph 3. The ceremony launched under the slogan Together for Better Health also featured activities to that end, including athletic events, educational games, and a theatrical performance that taught children about the dangers of obesity. A number of health food companies and sports clubs sponsoring the initiative also set up stalls to promote their products. Paragraph 4. Those who attended at the event donned the campaign's emblem, a yellow ribbon designed to look like a tape measure. The choice of yellow, the event's organizers said, represents childhood. The lightheartedness of the occasion, however, contrasts with the reality on the ground. Paragraph 5. A recent estimate from a 2017 World Health Organization survey of almost 6,000 school-age children in Lebanon found that one in four of the students' body mass index, or BMI, a figure derived from a person's body mass compared with their height or of 25 or higher. They are considered obese if this, if this or his or her BMI is 30 or higher. Being overweight or obese is a major risk factor for a number of chronic diseases, including diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer. So six, so uh, paragraph six, what it's saying is that the World Health Organization, uh, you know, the major authority on health in the world, made this survey of 6,000 students, which, which is a large figure. It's a sample that uh, represents a lot. One fourth of those had a large body mass index, which means they are either obese or fat. So why is that alarming? That's alarming because it's a major risk factor for getting chronic diseases we talked about earlier. Paragraph 8. Still, the country has a way to go to addressing childhood obesity, and there are a variety of explanations for its prevalence. The word prevalence, by the way, means it's widespread. Lebanese American University dietitian Amani Tarshishi attributed the problem to the changing face of motherhood, saying childhood obesity is a problem nowadays because women are working and not cooking at home. This sentiment was echoed in a speech about the evolution of people's health habits given by Haddad to a crowd of children and families. Paragraph 9. In the past, we used to walk everywhere and our mothers would cook meals for the whole family. Now they drive us to school and buy our food from supermarkets. Increasing awareness of childhood obesity and improving education, healthy eating and physical activity are the aims of Lebanese NGO uh, School Nutrition Association for Awareness and Change, which had a stall at Sunday's event. Okay, again, guys, if anything is to be done, neither the government alone can can do the work, nor the NGOs alone can do the work. NGOs, again, are non-governmental organizations. So hand in hand, they need to work together to find a practical solution to this issue. Paragraph 10, Greta Sahyun, a pediatrician at SNAAC, told the Daily Star about the importance of healthy eating at school. School is an important period in our children's lives. They spend half their day there for nine months a year, she said. Okay, in Lebanon, not many students are lucky to have cafeterias at school. Having a cafeteria at school means that good food is served. There is a healthy choice of food that a child could could take from. Okay, not the 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 usual stall that where the child buys chips and candy bars and uh, soda. Okay, having a school cafeteria should become a, a priority in the future for all schools. However, we know that 
nowadays it's only uh, uh, found among very few schools and thank god our school is one of them paragraph 11 at a separate obesity awareness event held thursday to mark world obesity day 2018 Paula Atalla, an endocrinologist and the president of the Lebanese Society of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Lipids, presented a much broader picture of the causes of childhood obesity. Okay, guys, an endocrinologist is a doctor uh, who specializes in the endocrine glands, and I'm sure you took that in biology, um, the, the hormone balance or imbalance in the body and how that affects it. Paragraph 12, she spoke about the lack of sport and exercise. The children are playing with their phones and iPads rather than riding bikes or playing outside, Atallah told the Daily Star. Paragraph 13, usually obesity among children is a result of bad habits since childhood, and there is also a lack of lifestyle education in Lebanon, Atallah said. So paragraphs 12 and 13 are echoing what's going on in the world today. Children and adolescents are becoming increasingly indoors people because everything is available for them. The world is available to them at the touch of a screen, their iPads, their tablets, their phones, etc. So they are no longer having the urge. They no longer have the urge to go out and practice sports and do physical activity. This is one major, major reason why obesity is increasing in Lebanon and in the world as a whole. So now let's move on to answer some uh, comprehension questions related to the text. Number one, by referring to paragraph one, what was the purpose of coming up with a day to fight childhood obesity? We said that it was to raise awareness in Lebanon about the issue. Two, in reference to paragraph five, why are the statistics of the World Health Organization 2017 survey worrisome? It was the, the survey where they found out that one fourth of the 6,000 children they surveyed had a body mass index above normal. Why is it worrisome? Of course, because it means they will uh, later on get chronic diseases such as diabetes and heart problems. Three, what is the correlation or the relation between working women and childhood obesity according to paragraph eight? Of course, because more women, okay, and uh, generally both parents are working nowadays, so there is less home cooked meals. Um, women are urged to order fast food meals or get a meal from the, the supermarket, something that is usually not healthy. So this is contributing to childhood obesity. Okay, and the following are the answers displayed for you here for each question. Moving on. Okay, now our second part is vocabulary. Figure out the meanings of the following words by referring to their context. Let's take the word tackle in paragraph one, okay? In a bid to tackle a growing problem, caretaker, health minister Ghassan Hasbani launched Sunday, the first national day for combating childhood obesity. To tackle an issue means to, obviously from context, if we don't know the word, it means to deal with something, okay? To deal with an issue. The word implement in paragraph seven. Implement. Okay, Joyce Haddad, director of preventative health care at the health ministry, told the Daily Star that the ministry will also soon be announcing the launch or the beginning of a national committee to implement a strategy to fight the disease. Implement a strategy. Okay, committee, the context clue is committee and strategy. What does it mean to implement something? A strategy, a plan, okay? So it means to tackle, deal with something. Implement means to put a plan into action. For example, if there is a law for the use of seat belts in Lebanon, there is a law for the use of seat belts, but is it implemented? No, it's not. Okay, there should be 
more efforts to implement or put this law or plan into action. More people should be okay punished if they are not wearing seat belts. Okay, and now the ministry is implementing plans that deal with obesity issues among children. Put them into action. Not only have them as names of laws out there, something that needs to be put into action. Now, uh, going to the organizational skills questions. Number one, what type of introduction does the author use to introduce the article? Name three purposes this method serves. Okay, I displayed the paragraph here for you. Beirut, recent estimates show as much as one third or a third of Lebanese children and adolescents may be overweight or obese. Already we know the type of introduction. It's an alarming statistic or a surprising fact. So the author used a surprising fact or a, an alarming statistic. Why? Okay, surprising statistics to introduce the article, which is please tell me the statistic or the statistics. One third of Lebanese children and adolescents are obese or overweight. This method, I want three purposes. Why the author used that? The, the method aims to catch the reader's attention arouse their curiosity to read more about the topic and introduce the main idea of the text, which is childhood obesity and the, uh, how the government is trying to tackle the issue. Question number two, why does the author quote Paula Atalla in paragraph 11? Okay, who is Paula Atalla? When we refer back to paragraph 11, we learn that Paula Atalla is an endocrinologist and the president of the Lebanese Society of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Lipids. And as we said before, an endocrinologist is an expert or a doctor in the field of the endocrine glands, okay, the balance and imbalance of hormones in the body. This makes her an expert in the field of obesity related issues since she's an endocrinologist. By quoting her, the author achieves credibility, authenticity, and accuracy for the article. You might also uh, exchange one of those words here for the word objectivity. It will be equally correct. Finally, question number three, name two types of audience who might be interested in reading the article. What is their interest? Suggested answer, two types of audience who might be interested in reading the article are parents of children who might be prone to obesity, to check out measures which are taken in order to limit this issue. Another uh, type of audience which I chose are healthcare professionals to gain more insight into what the government is doing to deal with the issues of obesity. You guys might have other uh, suggestions. You guys might, uh, might say, for example, uh, doctors, endocrinologists, uh, even uh, teenagers. Okay, but please be specific when you give me a type of audience and tell me what their interest is in this article. So that's it for uh, today's lecture. Uh, when we meet uh, on Zoom Live, we will discuss further any questions you might have. Goodbye.